Okay, in this uh, part of this introductory video, I will talk about, it's a kind of plug, uh, an ad if you like, uh, what are the trade-offs between free profing and wage profing. So free prof is somebody like me who gives YouTube lectures for free at uh, comprehensively, so hundreds of courses, so making it possible for somebody to teach themselves uh, for free. Okay, uh, so these these topics on the left hand side here and a few here on the right hand side, they are various points uh, in in this context. So uh, these these lectures are free. Now, if you're a parent and you have a very bright, uh, let's say 18 year old, very bright, who gets into Harvard in the US, that will put you back in terms of student fees about $40,000 a year. So if, let's say a four year undergrad course, that's 160,000 bucks. That is expensive, right? So by uh, free profiting, if, if, if large numbers of other professors, you know, put here, um, influence other free profs. So I hope by setting the example of uh, creating, uh, filming, um, camcording, hundreds, you know, comprehensively, uh, lectures in, in particular fields, so my specialty would be pure math and math physics, but other free profs could do the same thing in their fields, uh, psychology, sociology, law, whatever. Okay? So uh, provide the means that uh, people all over the planet can educate themselves effectively for free, and then we can get can get rid of this this kind of phenomenon, like forty thousand dollars a year. I mean, it's just nuts, right? Okay. Now there are lots of advantages of free profiting from the point of view of the student, the the, the yeah the student. So uh, effectively, it's non-real time. So if you go, if you're a conventional student and you're sitting in a classroom listening to a wage prof. Uh, rambling on, and uh, well, say you're young, and say the night before you uh, you you got you got distracted because you were revering, um, you were thinking about the the wonderful time you had the night before with your boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, and you're in a reverie for five or ten minutes, and you just miss what the professor was saying. It's just gone. So if uh, if you've lost it, you've lost it. You, you can't get it back. Whereas uh, with a YouTube type lecture, that's what the, the free profs are offering, then you can rewind, right? You, you, can, you can look at uh, some five minutes or whatever of uh, some explanation, and if you don't understand it, or if it went too fast, well, you can stop it and rewind, go back. So that's a huge advantage. So you can do this as many times as you like until you get it. That's, that's a very big plus. Okay? So, it doesn't matter if you're distracted. Uh, you can learn at your own pace. A huge advantage. So, if you're doing, say, uh, I don't know, M2, second year master's, or PhD level one, in, say, pure mathematics, you know, it gets hard. You, know, you need to be an alpha. Uh, defined in previous uh, sections, uh, an alpha, A-L-F-A, I spell it, is somebody in the top percentile, or top one percent of intelligence in the population? So you know you need to be smart. Okay. So uh, so if you're a bottom alpha in a PhD uh, pure mathematics class, let's say, and uh, the level of abstraction and the speed that uh, the professor is talking or lecturing at, if that's too fast for you, th then you may miss stuff. But uh, by looking at uh, YouTube videos and so forth, you can go at your own pace. So if you're really bright, you may want to go faster than the speed that the wage prof is going at. And so y you can. You can just you, you, you could do several um, lectures a day if you wanted to, if you, if you understand them. You can, you can go at your own pace. So uh, that, that should make things uh, a lot easier, uh, far more flexible for people who are really bright, okay? So learn at your own, own pace. Uh, an expanded audience. Now, if you're a wage prof um, giving a lecture in a classroom, then maximum you may be lecturing to maybe several hundred students. Uh, that, that would be a big classroom. Right? 
Uh, uh, typically at, at graduate level, you might be lecturing to you know, 20 or so grad students, you know, that, that kind of thing. So, but that's chicken feed. That's nothing in comparison to uh, the potential size of your audience. You know, if you're good, if you're a good professor, interesting, and so on. You could have an audience literally of millions. So, uh, big plus. Now, of course, you have to compete with other uh, professors. And if I were, let's say, a Harvard professor, I would be far more brilliant, uh, more, perhaps more engaging, and would be able to give you a much better lecture. Um, don't deny that. I mean, of course, there'll be competition, and that's good. It's good for the it's good for the students. Right? Uh, more choice. Okay. Uh, flexible time length lectures. So I I just talk until I feel I'm done. Right? There's, there's no I don't have to watch the clock too much. Well, I do. <laughs> YouTube upload time constraint reasons. I, I do have to watch things in that sense, but I can cut it up. Um, I can cut up the video. So, uh, I'm as a as a free prof. I'm much less constrained in terms of the length of a lecture that I give. Right? I, I can I can talk for five minutes. I can talk for hours. Um, you know, no constraint that way. Right? Uh, greater range of lectures. So, you know, when I was deciding on uh, which courses to to teach and to put on my list on, on, on this uh, tab, the Garris MPC, you know, which, which lectures would I give? Uh, one of the big questions, early questions was, well, how many lecture sets or courses on a particular topic would, it, would I give? Would I just choose one? Which is pretty well, like, if, if you're a physics student and uh, you, uh, you want to do, say, quantum mechanics, then probably there'll just be one course taught at M1, the first year master's level, at your university. That, that's typical for economic reasons. But I, I, you know, as a free prof, I don't have to be constrained that way. I can, I can give as many as I like. And, and I do in, in certain basic topics, like, like quantum mechanics. Uh, I, I give dozens, literally dozens of courses on more or less the same topic. So if you really want to plunge in and learn a topic thoroughly, then you can watch lots of courses and you get the perspective, uh, the different perspectives of different authors who, who, you know, who see things differently. So you get, you get a, a broader and deeper uh, appreciation of the topic. And that's, that's a big plus, another plus of uh, free propping versus wage propping. Right? Uh, all under one roof, sort of the Walmart slogan. So if... Uh, now, <laughs> like I was saying before, with um, half a million YouTube videos on uh, university lectures already up on, on YouTube and similar institutions, uh, you have a, a, quite a choice. But that's part of the problem, right? You have to go hunting around. So uh, one of the advantages, well, <laughs> once they're up, and it'll take time, of course, it's a disadvantage, but one of the advantages of, of going to Degaris MPC is that... Uh, it's pretty comprehensive, right? With uh, nearly 600 courses or lecture sets, uh, you will very likely find, if you're a math or pure, ma a pure math or physics student, you'll likely, highly likely to find what you're looking for. It'll be there because the range is comprehensive. That's that's my intention. So uh, you can afford to be lazy. You, you just go go to this site and this uh, tab, and you know, go down the list, uh, an alphabetical list, uh, for example, in pure math, uh, maybe the first one is, I well, need to check, but maybe abstract algebra. And you, you just go, go down this list alphabetically until you find uh, the topic 